Bun găsit la o nouă întâlnire în punctul 0. Eu sunt Magda Axinte și vă mulțumesc că ne urmăriți. Invitatul întâlnirii de astăzi este unul cu adevărat special, un maestru în adevăratul sens al cuvântului. Am bucuria să vi-l fac cunoscut pe maestrul Sri Vasudeva, pe care dacă încă nu l-ați citit sau nu l-ați văzut în interviurile din țară, pentru că sunt mulți ani de când maestrul ne vizitează și susține workshop-uri și conferințe, este momentul acum să-l întâlniți aici, la Întâlnire în punctul zero. Bun găsit! Bine ați venit! Mă bucur să, să ne întâlnim! Este o bucurie pentru mine! Întâlnire în punctul zero este un concept pe care l-am simțit necesar în aceste momente și în aceste perioade de transformare a conștiinței. Consider că e un moment în care cunoașterea poate ajunge mult mai ușor la inimile celor care au nevoie și care sunt deschiși pentru a primi această cunoaștere. Este o etapă frumoasă în evoluția noastră a fiecăruia, iar dumneavoastră sunt convinsă că aveți foarte multe să ne spuneți, să ne clarificați și să înțelegem mai bine unde suntem și ce ar fi bine pentru fiecare să, să facem pe viitor. First of all, I'm happy to be in the ashes today. Um, it's been a long time I've been here since 2004, so it's a bit exciting that I'm here. Yes, um, The subject that I'm going to speak about is about transforming the human experience, uh, bringing a more conscious, uh, more consciousness into the human experience. And um, I think that is the most important uh, element in the human experience. So if we are to live life masterfully, fully, and joyously, we need to, to lift our consciousness to experience the more that we are. Uh, we are told in spiritual circles that the divine is within us. Then can we bring that into our conscious experience? Can we really realize that the divine is in us even as we act? So lifting the consciousness to, to, to realize who we are more than human is extremely necessary if we are to live fully the human experience. So self-transformation is key to living fully, joyously, and, uh, and to have a, a fulfilled experience in the human life. So self-transformation is necessary. Last evening I, I spoke on this subject of understanding self and living life from a deeper understanding of self. And today I'm going to do the same thing uh, in Yash. I'm going to speak about um, well-being and spirituality. How can spirituality or spiritual consciousness or higher consciousness um, improve our well-being at every level? Uh, we, we tend to think that uh, the physical is the only level that exists, and we are conditioned by society to think that way. But we need to understand more about mental well-being, emotional well-being, um, the vital energy that drives the body, and, uh, and the spiritual consciousness behind it. If we can do that, if we can lift the consciousness to the more of us, uh, we can bring well-being at every level, including a harmonious uh, uh, relationship with the environment. Because the more conscious we are, the more we see the consciousness that exists in the environment itself, plant life, animal life, the living forms on the earth. So it's extremely important to lift the consciousness, and that's where self-transformation comes in. So I'm looking forward to an exciting day today. <laughs> Cred că ar fi foarte interesant pentru toți cei care ne urmăresc să afle mai multe despre dumneavoastră, despre traseul inițiatic pe care l-ați parcurs până în acest punct, pentru că orice maestru are un drum care spune o poveste despre transformare, despre înțelegere, despre înțelepciune, și cred că ar fi foarte util și frumos să aflăm cum a început pentru dumneavoastră această călătorie și care au fost etapele. Because uh, if we had a transformal experience of uh, the world, we need to understand self 
more. And my journey started when I, when I was 20 years old. Um, suddenly I became aware in a very intense way that I couldn't control my mind. For a lot of people, they accept that as a normal way of living. But the fact that I couldn't control my thoughts was uh, very disempowering for me. I felt uh, completely challenged that I couldn't control my mind. And I thought, um, how can human beings li live without controlling the mind? In fact, at 20, I was preparing to go to university. And then I started to think, if I were to go to university, continue my studies, and if I were to, to, to graduate and uh, become more knowledgeable in the worldly sense, would I be able to control my mind? No. Would I be able to experience love? Would I really be able to master the human experience? Of course, I'll have a lot of knowledge yes. and uh, I'll be able to get a good job. But would I really be able to enjoy the human experience in a fulfilled way? So that really challenged my thinking as to what society drives us to do. Is it the real thing? Is it what we really need? And so I started to explore um, subjects of metaphysics, spirituality, esoteric thinking, and deeper thinking. And then I saw a whole new field of education that could really take me into a high level of consciousness. So I became excited. I was depressed on one hand that our society doesn't uh, guide us in that direction. But I was excited that there was an avenue that I could follow that could lead me into a higher state of consciousness. Of course, um, when I would speak to people about my, my intentions, I'm a young man, should be thinking of university career and, and uh, be having a vision of living the perfect life in society. But I'm having a vision of understanding myself and how do I get to manage my mind, to be in a state of love? Um, how can I become a better human being? How can I connect with the creator of life? Who brought me here? Why am I here? Where am I going? How can I answer these questions? So this became, this became an obsession with me. Societatea ne învață cum să ne descurcăm și să ne creăm niște roluri. Rolurile le jucăm în această societate, dar dincolo de aceste roluri, cu care ar fi bine să nu ne identificăm, există cu totul altceva și acolo e nevoie să ajungem cu toții. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I wanted to give you my, my story of self-transformation. Yeah. And um, so I was driven to find someone who could teach me because I found that reading books and performing religious rituals and prayers wouldn't lift my consciousness to where I wanted to be. So I began to think, is there somebody in this universe or somebody in this world who, uh, who knows himself? And then, of course, so we, we are told of these masters who live in a higher consciousness and who will transform their life completely. So I thought, this is what I need. I need to be taught by a master. I need to be guided by a master. And that took me uh, to India at 21 years old, looking for masters um, throughout India. And I had the most phenomenal experience um, in one of the spiritual centers in India of experiencing a deep and profound transformation that changed my life completely. What happened there is that I became more aware that I'm not the body, but but I am I'm centered in this energy uh, experience of being. I began to have another identity. I began to feel that the, the energy of love emanated from some space in my chest. But if I were to go there and I were to think of being loving, I can feel my this center of my body becoming warm. That's how I learned about chakras, spiritual centers, energy centers. And then I, um, I began to feel that when I would have focused there, uh, I, I would chant mantras I learned in India. Then the voice will tend to come out automatically. I began to feel that there was some power within me that was guiding me. This became very exciting because I began to think, maybe the God that we are searching for outside, maybe that God is within. And maybe that God could guide us from within so that we can have a personal experience of God within. And uh, I became very excited about this science of energy. And so um, I, I began to read up about these experiences. And I learned about chakras. 
I learned about Kundalini, a divine power within us, yeah. and I began to realize that God is within. The power of the universe is within. So I began to tap into a source of power that was within me, and that was empowering me in a different way. So my life suddenly became exciting. I wanted to explore more of this love. I wanted to explore more of this freedom that I was feeling and this uh, energy that was guiding me inside. I wanted to deeply communicate with it. And um, one of the things that happened to me in India, but I left after four months because I was, I was so fulfilled. Uh, one of the things that, that happened to me is that I began to feel that there was some kind of energy center pulsating inside of my brain. In the same way I felt something pulsating in my heart, opening me up to love. I began to feel that something was pulsating inside of my brain that was opening up my mind. So I began to think and understand that the brain is not the mind, that the power of the mind comes from a deeper center inside of the brain. And so I learned of a chakra, a center of energy, a spiritual center that's called Ajna. And when I were to focus there, I would feel that my mind for the first time in my life that it would become focused and peaceful. So I pursued this journey of energy inside of myself and this uh, guidance of Kundalini that continued as I give more attention to it over three years. And I had the most fascinating experience, is experiences of self-transformation. I became a different person, a completely different person. What I am today is distinctly different to who I was before 20 years. So, and so at 24, I was a different person completely. I felt I felt in touch with energies in all of life. If I were to meet a person, I can actually feel their energies. And I can, I can I experience that God is within us as a source of all power. All we need to do is to, to tap into that God consciousness inside and to manifest that, express that in everything that we do. So that's how self-transformation came. It came by an inner journey of spiritual unfolding, of consciousness unfolding, and then it became, became a journey of expressing that fully on the outside. So I love the human experience and I love bringing light into the human experience. Și o faceți pentru că toată activitatea pe care o desfășurați în toată lumea are această menire. Ați fondat Blue Star acum mulți ani în urmă și există și în România această filială. M-ar interesa să spuneți un pic povestea acestui acestei organizații și mai ales a denumirii Blue Star. Yeah, there's an exciting story behind the name. And um, my mother was, was very close to my spiritual journey. She was completely heartbroken when I went to India. As you can imagine, a mother of a 21-year-old son, and I was the eldest son. So it broke her heart that I left. And, um, but she was such a spiritual person that when I came back, everything that I learned She wanted to be involved in the practice as well. And she became so deep into these practices that she herself went into an elevated spiritual state. So I was amazed about that. And, um, and she was in this, uh, after one of my deepest experiences that transformed my whole state of consciousness, um, my mother was in, my, in our prayer room. And uh, I, I entered the prayer room. She was just lying there, resting. And I entered there and I saw that she was, uh, she was saying something to herself. And actually she, was, she wanted to say something to me, but she was not in just a waking consciousness. She was in a little bit of a trance. So I went and I asked her, Mom, what are you saying? And she said, you should call this organization that, that, you, that you're going to lead, the Blue Star. And she says, it's the, the house of the divine. And it, and it involves the whole universe. You, so she was saying that this is a, a divine place for people, um, what you're going to have, and it's going to, um, and it's going to include everybody. It involves, it's universal in thinking. So she was the one who inspired the Blue Star. And uh, I just want to tell you a little bit of uh, my mother. She was very special. She said that when I was, uh, when, she, when I was in her womb, and she was three months pregnant, She was reading a, a scripture of a tradition, the Hindu tradition. So she was reading a, a book about the, the God that shines through the sun. And, uh, yeah, and, and the special God is, is called Surya, sun. So if you, 
if you pray to this God of the sun, that you will have a sun as bright as the sun. <laughs> so the, the, the book says that you should do this ritual and prayer for five Sundays, and you'll, you will get a sun who will be bright as the sun. <laughs> so she, she was so excited about this. So she did the ritual faithfully for, for 21 Sundays, not five, 21. <laughs> And in those days of no ultrasound, she didn't know whether it would be a boy or a girl, but she prayed strongly for a boy, a sun as bright as the sun. This is what she got. <laughs> so you can see what a, what a beautiful mother that was. And throughout my entire spiritual career, she was very close to me, and she loved the work that I was doing. So she was behind the, the name of the Blue Star and the work of the Blue Star. She passed away in 1993, and, um, but I still feel her spirit guarding the organization and myself. So that's about the name and my mom, <laughs> who's behind the name. Da, e frumos uh, și impresionant. Um, dar uh, mă gândeam că am rămas la discuția despre maestru și rolul unui maestru în viața unei persoane care își dorește această transformare. Uh, cum recunoaștem un maestru cu adevărat uh, necesar vieții noastre și cât de important este să-l găsim? Yeah, that's a good question. But first of all, I, I would like to start with the importance of a master. Why a master is important? And masters in, are important because they bring a different presence to us. Because they're grounded in a higher consciousness. The way their minds operate is different. The way they express emotion is different. The way they, they think is different. Their openness. Um, in our journey, we are so caught up with the material world, material thinking, livelihood, family, property, uh, survival, um, that this kind of uh, energy and presence and consciousness is not available to us in a, in a, in a great way around us. So when we are fortunate enough to meet these very special people, and I believe that they exist everywhere, even in indigenous cultures in countries where we call them shamans or um, medicine person, or, or everywhere you will find these special beings um, who may go unnoticed, but they carry such wisdom and such presence and such beauty. These are the ones we need. They can help us to transform. When you meet a true master, you will feel that you are meeting the best friend, someone you can trust, someone who will not judge you, someone who will hold your hand on the journey, someone who will care about you. Um, and that person, if it is your master, because I believe that we all have our own masters, that person who we feel connected to. And um, when we meet whoever is our master, we'll actually feel that this person is for us. I can follow this person. I, I like the way this person thinks. I like the presence of this person. So w we will immediately have a very positive kind of uh, experience in the presence of a master that uplifts the consciousness. What is important is that in that spiritual impact or in that um, connection we feel, we should have a transformation inside that is real, authentic, and could last. So if we are with someone and we find that we have to exert a lot of energy, do a lot of things, and we find that we're not growing, then we need to really check to see that is a master for us. But when we meet a master for us, we'll feel that we begin to grow, we begin to change, our consciousness begins to change. And here I want to talk a little bit uh, about the, the presence of someone. The presence of a master is, is like a field of light that extends in the space that we can actually feel when a master is present, peace is present, love is present, God is present, and um, wisdom becomes present. And uh, when we come in, into that kind of presence, we'll feel that's a transforming presence. It's like if you take a, a piece of iron and you put it next to a strong magnet, in, the, in a piece of unmagnetized iron, the molecules are 
in all direction. But when it's placed next to a, a powerful magnet, the molecules in this piece of iron will align themselves just like in the magnet. So this now will begin to have magnetism. So it shows how just the field, the magnetic field of this magnet is impacting on this piece of uh, iron. So, so too, when we come into the field, the energy field of a master, there's an impact there, even if the master s says nothing. Even if we don't uh, ask anything, we begin to feel that there's some presence there that's impacting us. And if we associate more with that kind of presence, which is there in evol with evolved souls, we'll begin to feel a transformation happening very naturally within us. That's the beauty of masters. What, another thing about a master is that a master will never try to make us a servant or a slave or manipulate us. A master, real masters, want us to be free and independent and self-empowered, self-driven. So. We should never give our power away to anyone who says he or she's a master, if they bring us into servitude or they bring us into a kind of um, condition where, where we are manipulated or taken advantage of. Master should help us to be free. Foarte adevărat. Într-adevăr, un maestru are acest, acest impact fantastic asupra unei persoane și asupra unui grup de persoane. Se știe, s-a scris despre asta, sunt mulți trăitori care pot vorbi despre acest efect în lanț, aș putea să-i spun. Și mă bucur că, că am cunoscut și eu la rândul meu multe persoane care au determinat o schimbare a percepției și o schimbare a modului în care mi-am considerat viața și existența de până acum câțiva ani. Aș vrea să, să vorbim despre câteva subiecte, de fapt să clarificăm anumite um, informații care sunt destul de eronate în, în, chiar și în lucrări, în cărți și în mediul online despre structura noastră Structura fizică o cunoaștem cu toții este apanajul medicinii. În schimb, structura noastră energetică, corpul de lumină, ceacrele, rolul lor, toate aceste informații nu sunt foarte bine clarificate și nu sunt puse într-o într logică chiar. The inability of our world to appreciate higher consciousness is because of the material thinking and consciousness. So you'll find even in our, our education, our medicine, our psychology, it's all about the brain and the physical body. But inside of this physical body, there is an anatomy that we can't see. A subtle energy anatomy. One may say a quantum field anatomy. This is, this is where we experience the energy that we call Kundalini. It's an evolutionary energy. It comes up and it opens up our consciousness and our energies. And uh, so it is important to understand that subtle energy identity. And hopefully uh, in our world, more and more, more consideration will be given to research and to exploration of this deeper uh, field of existence that we are not able to grasp with our human senses. So there is within us that subtle anatomy. And of course, I can speak a lot about it. And, um, but in terms of that subtle anatomy, is there anything that you would like to know in particular? Or is there anything that you would like to ask me in particular? Because I can speak a lot about a subtle field. And it's based on my experiences. Aș vrea să știu ce este corpul de lumină. It, it is existing in us. So, uh, but I, I think what you mean is how it's structured. Um, inside of our brain. Psychologists say that the brain chemistry is what creates thinking. 
the wise, those who have experienced the inner anatomy, says there are two chakras, one at the crown, two energy centers, one at the crown and one at the center of the eyebrows, inside the brain. And these are what influence the brain. So if we were to experience this chakra awakening, which you can when guided by a master, we can actually experience that our brain, our brain's capacity is expanding. We are able to use the brain more effectively, left brain and right brain. We are used to, we can use more effectively. At the throat, there is a, a center of energy. When you experience that, you realize that you can transmit a deeper energy through the voice. You can lift someone with your voice. Or you can manipulate someone with your voice. Or depress them. So that's a throat power, an energy that comes with the word. At the, at the center of the chest, we have the center of emotional energy. So though it relates to the brain, but the actual center through which we experience the emotion and the channeling of emotion, it's at the center of the chest. At the navel, we have another one. And at the navel, this revitalizes the body completely. So if we were to become aware of this, if it's activated, and we can tap into it, we'll actually feel that we can channel energy into the body, like martial artists do. You see how the kind of powerful work they do. And at the sexual point, behind sexual energy is a spiritual energy. So in our normal condition ways, we think that sexuality is simply about the body. And, uh, but from the spiritual context, we can bring light into the sexual field. So especially for people uh, who are couples or, or live together, they can actually bring more light into the sexual experience that heightens it and makes it, makes it spiritual. But we have learned to think that that's low. So this kind of uh, consciousness and awareness brings about a different experience between male and female, a more spiritual and conscious experience. And I do believe, this is my opinion, that when children are born out of that kind of relationship, we have the best, the best children, the best souls, the best minds. And, um, Right down at the root of the spine, in the area that we call the perineum, that is the area of the root chakra. When we go there, we feel a deeper connection with the earth. We feel much more in the physical body. In other words, we feel grounded. So we have these seven chakras, so, uh, from the crown of the head right down to the root of the spine. And this gives us an energy anatomy. So if we become aware of these chakras and we begin to use them in terms of channeling energy, energies through them, uh, through our intentions and our attention, we can actually experience life from a whole other level, super conscious, super energetic, revitalizing, healing, uplifting, transforming. So that's the experience of that, that quantum world. And that's the inner structure. And that's, so this whole axis along the spine and the brain is an important part of us that we need to give deeper attention to. And that's what we do in the, in the deeper work of spirituality. Există și chakre superioare, uh, sahasrare, care ne unesc uh, cu sinele nostru superior, cu divinitatea? Yes, so... so, so let me just uh, talk a little bit, that's a good question, about the, the function of each chakra. Okay. Right. So the three lower chakras are mainly concerned or connected to body functioning, vitality into the body, sexuality in the, into the body, and grounding in the body, the lower three chakras. So when you give attention to core work and lower body work, you are actually becoming more vital in the body. Mom, you able you're able to manage the body in, in a greater way the emotional center takes us a little deeper away from body and into the area of emotion emotion is a 
huge part of the human experience. Because when people experience sadness, depression, loss, it, it, it deeply affects the physical body. Someone may not even want to live anymore. So this is, a, I would call, a superior chakra uh, that makes us want to live in the body, makes us want to live the human experience, and, and makes us want to associate or relate to others. So this is an extremely important chakra in terms of relationship, in terms of bringing more light into, the, into our bodies. The throat chakra is a chakra of expression. So it's a, it's a place where we can listen differently. It's connected to, to, to sound. It's a place where we can listen differently. It's a place where we can speak differently. So it allows uh, greater awareness of communication in terms of listening, in terms of speaking. And so it is a, it is a, a great contributor towards wisdom, which brings us to the brow. So this center is a center of uh, vision, creativity, power of thought, positive thinking. So uh, intellectual thinking, uh, creative thinking, that's right brain, left brain. So this center is a very powerful center in terms of giving us focus and great intellectual power, control over, over the rest. So this is a superior chakra. And it is when this chakra is awakened and gives the mind more consciousness that we can create a deeper relationship with the universe. We can be guided and led into what we may call cosmic awareness, the highest relationship we can have with existence. Suddenly, we begin to realize that everything is a part of us. That is what this crown awareness brings to us. Not, the, not just intellectual power, but the consciousness of unity. And it brings out the best of the heart. This crown brings out the best in every chakra. So it makes us want to enjoy the experience of the body because we can feel in contact with every body cell. It makes us want to open the heart to love and to be in great relationships with nature and environment and people. And it brings us into a consciousness where we begin to believe and realize that everything is sacred. Everything is divine. So it brings sacredness of life. That's the crown. It brings unity, it brings harmony, and it brings sacredness in the consciousness, divinity in the consciousness. So that's so this this the chakras in the brain are the most important ones in terms of managing the human experience, in terms of elevating the consciousness, and completely freeing the consciousness from all burdens and attachments to, to the human life. Back to Jane. <laughs> Practic, în acest fel ajungem să fim conștienți de noi înșine. Acestea ar fi etapele și în acel moment putem să simțim chiar că trăim cu adevărat în corpul nostru și nu doar în mintea noastră. Yes, it, 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 this, uh, this uh, higher consciousness makes us live the human experience fully, makes us be in our body fully and makes us um, relate in the human experience, we lose the sense of fear um, because we begin to feel that the divine is everywhere, that we are protected no matter where we go. Um, we, uh, we have an exciting experience in the physical body, and uh, I just uh, thought of it, that every chakra from the root to the throat, every chakra is connected to the elements of nature and to a human sense. So root chakra, when you go there and you can actually feel root chakra and be held in it, it influences the, the, the sense of smell. You can pick up the smells of nature even more clearly. And um, so it's connected to earth and it's connected to the sense of smell. Second chakra, sacral chakra, is connected to water element and it's connected to taste. So the more you, that chakra is activated and in the human experience, you will feel that your taste is different. You're able to taste things in a, in a more refined way. And um, you have a, a deeper relationship with water. You can harmonize with the water element in a, in a very powerful way. Um, navel chakra is a fire element. And it's the sense of sight, light. So when, this, uh, is, when the navel chakra is fired up or activated, 
we actually begin to feel that we have this fire of vitality in the entire body. And that shine that comes from that vital fire is called Tejas, light. So we can actually feel it. We see things clearly. The body sees, the body becomes more energized and more filled with light. Our, our, our sight becomes different. We not only see in the human sense, but our spiritual eye opens up and we are able to see the, the divine lights on the inside. And um, the, the heart chakra, the, the center, is connected to touch and feeling. Touch and the air element. Lungs are there. Air element. So it brings us into a closer relationship with the air, atmosphere, breathing. That we call the pranayama experience. I'll speak a little bit about that tonight, this evening. And, uh, and it, so it brings uh, energetic touch. It brings a deeper relationship with the breath, breathing, and air. And um, the throat chakra is connected to the sense of hearing, the ear. So when the throat is activated, it not only improves the voice, it improves your hearing. You're able to hear better, even in the physical world, and you are able to hear what we may call the divine sounds. You can hear the music of the spheres, as it were. Some great composers will go inside and they can hear the music on the inside and then they come and compose it. So that's the inner hearing. So the, the, the throat chakra influences that. So these five chakras, so the element is space. So these five chakras are, are connected to the elements. So when they are open, you have a greater relationship with the elements of nature. And the senses come alive in a different way. So you really fully live in the body and the human experience. Și în acele momente și comunicarea cu ceilalți se îmbunătățește, pentru că toate aceste simțuri activate ajută în comunicare, comunicare care nu se reduce la acea comunicare verbală, ci acea comunicare completă prin care simți pe ceilalți, prin care poți să interacționezi chiar și atunci când ești în tăcere. Absolut. It brings this beautiful state of being able to communicate with your world beyond words. So even with animals, you begin to feel that you can pick up their feelings, you, like the horse whisperer, whisperer or the dog whisperer, how, how people can communicate with these animals in a deeper sense, just through presence. And if human beings, of course, we can communicate in a very deep and profound way uh, without, without, the, without the, the voice or the, or the touch, we can communicate from inside. So yes, at every level, we come alive and we can communicate uh, uh, very profoundly with life. So we become the, the super communicator. <laughs> Oamenii trăiesc multe suferințe de-a lungul vieții și aceste suferințe um, îi pot ajuta să crească interior, dar sunt și situații în care rămână acea stare și se cufundă în acea stare pe care o putem numi depresie. Corpul nostru emoțional cum îl putem ajuta și cum îl putem conștientiza pentru a putea uh, gestiona acele emoții, pentru a înțelege ce rol are acea emoție, ce energie se ascunde în spatele acelei emoții și cum am putea rezolva emoția pentru a o alchimiza și a o transforma în ceva care să ne înalțe, nu să ne coboare. People can be transformed through the, through the... The, the spiritual, um, but sometimes the difficulties there through the experiences um, of being transformed. But one should not give up hope because even though the material experience is depressing, the potential of the human being is not lost. Even in the worst state of depression, miraculously, a person could, could be transformed if they have deep faith. And I do believe that the divine, the creator, cares about us all as created beings and that no one is lost. You see, even in the biblical sense, or biblical story of the prodigal son. 
And Jesus spoke about the prodigal son. And uh, he went away into the world, took his, his inheritance early before his father would pass away. And um, he went and lavished and spent, spent everything. And uh, then he became very depressed when he lost everything. And he thought, oh my God, I have to live with these pigs. And I have to eat the food. And look at my father's house, what he has. And he thought to himself, oh my God, how can I go back now and tell my father I made a big mistake? And um, after a while he thought, no, I have to go back to my father. And when he went back, his father was waiting for him. And his father was so happy that his son, who went out there, spent everything, became depressed, came back to him. So he was always looking out for his son, but his son had to make the decision to come back. So we too, no matter what state we get into and we think that we have lost favor with the divine, we think that we are not seen by the divine, no matter how depressing life can be, if there is a spark of goodness in us, which I believe there is a spark in everybody, that spark could bring us back to the divine. So no one has ever lost, in my opinion. And I do believe in life after life. So even in this life, we don't achieve that deeper communication with the divine or happy experience of, of life. If we live with a desire that that is what we want, another life will bring it, if not this life. So I'm always hopeful that once there is a, a desire for truth and divine and for happiness and, uh, and for goodness, we will, be, we will be helped out of the darkness. So it's a gracious universe. So life experiences can transform us because they, we grow continuously. But even when we think that we are so far gone, we're not. Adevărat. Ne puteți vorbi despre inteligența emoțională din punctul dumneavoastră de vedere? Yeah, that's extremely important. That's an extremely important subject because I see so many people sad in the world and some people emotionally challenged in, uh, in all relationships whether it's the relationship with their body, whether it's the relationship at work, whether it's a relationship in the home, whether it's a romantic relationship between male and female, or whether it's a relationship between parents and children. So one of the things in, in uh, emotional intelligence is that if we want to improve our relationships, we need to be more aware of how we become carried away by emotions and we begin to lose our reasoning. When we get carried away by, by anger or greed or pride or whatever the emotion might be, we tend to lose reason. We tend to think in a small box, this is what we want and we want to go after it. So sometimes in our um, desire for something, we may put people down. We may not see them. We may trample upon them to achieve what we want. And, um, and uh, that's not emotionally intelligent. Because at some point, we'll be creating so much uh, negativity in the space that that will come back to, to haunt us or to affect us. So if we learn how to manage our emotions. We need first to see them, to see that emotions are what we create. Emotions just do not happen like that. We create them. So if we are more conscious of our emotions and we open up our consciousness to see the possibilities of creating different emotions, So if I'm angry and I, I say, I don't like this anger. It doesn't feel healthy. I don't, I'm not happy. So can I change this? If I would ask the question, is there more possibilities? Can I change this? Can I change the way I'm relating to this person? If we begin to think of more possibilities and we open the consciousness, chances are we can see that if we, do, if we did it differently, if we express ourselves differently, the result could have been different. So to be emotionally intelligent, we need the intelligence 
intelligence function of the mind. We need rationality, we need the intellect. So if intellect and emotion can work hand in hand, then we become emotionally intelligent. Practic să echilibrăm cele două chakre, anahata și ajna. Yeah, absolutely. There must be a balance between both of them. E foarte important uh, să înțelegem acest aspect și să, um, să înțelegem responsabilitatea noastră în a ne gestiona viața în felul acesta. Yeah, our life is our responsibility. We are in charge of, of, of what we are and who we are, what we have become, through the choices we have made. So, every day it's a responsibility to keep our emotions in the best place, to be emotionally intelligent, to be um, mentally aware, and to use the mind in the most positive ways every day, because every negative thought can depress us, can lower our energy. So, it's extremely important to be responsible for every thought, every word that comes out of the mouth, every action that we perform. So a prayer that I say every day is to, um, to guide me, guide my every thought, O oh power of the universe. You exist in me and around me. Guide my every thought, my every word, and my every action, that I may be a blessing to my world. Let me be aware of this every time I express myself to my world. Let me be aware that you are within me and that you are the light within me. And may your light shine in and through me, in every thought, in every word, in every action. Da, practic așa putem să ne spiritualizăm viața, să ne spiritualizăm uh, activitățile noastre și să înțelegem spiritualitatea ca un mod de a trăi și nu ca o retragere din lume, ca o uh, modalitate de a uh, trăi separat și doar așa putem ajunge într-o anumită stare modificată și superioară de conștiință, ci în lume să trăim viața într-un mod spiritualizat. Yeah, and that's, that's a very important uh, way of thinking. That it's not by escaping the world that we'll become more spiritual, but we do need to take time off when we feel um, that life is too much. We need to take the little time off. Like in a day when we are very busy, 20 minutes. Meditation. Meditation, <laughs> coming to ourselves. Or if we've been working hard, you know, every month we take a little retreat, a weekend or a day, mm -hmm. uh, to ourselves, where we can exercise, meditate, and um, read, um, have good company, and just change what, what we do. So definitely. Um, but what I, what I like is that when we build ourselves spiritually, we can only know how good we have done if we allow it to be tested in the world. <laughs> so going out there and really bringing the light we'll really know if that light is strong and stable if it's tested. So when anger visits us and negative situation comes, if we, if we are able to stay in the light, have faith in who we are and that power that lies within and really tap into it and manifest it, then we'd enjoy living in the world as I do. After my spiritual experiences, I decided I want to experience the world. I want to test what I've gained by living in the world, and I did. I mastered the profession, and I, I, um, I studied, and I went into the working world, I mastered the working world, and I only left it when I thought that I wanted, I wanted to do something even bigger, which is the start of the Blue Star. So I love the experience of being in the world, but not off it. That the world can be there, but it cannot influence me. I can influence it. Da, așa este, mai ales că toată activitatea pe care ați desfășurat-o în ultimii ani um, în acea direcție a mers. Uh, sunt uh, și multe cărți pe care um, cei care ne urmăresc le pot, uh, le pot cumpăra și le pot uh, citi. Este multă înțelepciune acolo, este multă înțelepciune chiar în spatele cuvintelor scrise. 
Dacă intrăm un pic în energia cărții și a stării în care ați scris-o. Yes, the, the writer of a book is really um, putting energy in words. And if we're receptive, this energy can be tapped into as the words come alive in us as we read them. So it's more than just a printed word. <laughs> Yes. It's wisdom and energy and life experiences coming to us, awakening in us deeper thinking and deeper experiences of self. Yeah, so books are, I love, I love reading. I love, I love um, literature. I love to see how, how people um, put their energy into words and the excitement in which they do. And I love the... Um, I love the kind of uh, feeling it creates in sh sharing the experience of another person through their words. A person's life can be shared through a book and it can really be very inspiring. Mulțumesc foarte mult. A fost o bucurie pentru mine să avem această întâlnire în punctul zero. E cu adevărat Frumos că se întâmplă, frumos că veniți și împărtășiți celorlalți din, din cunoașterea la care ați ajuns și um, m-aș bucura să se mai întâmple aceste, aceste întâlniri și cu altă ocazie o vă aștept oricând. Um, sunt convinsă că Iașul um, vă întâmpină cu bucurie de fiecare dată. Deci... A fost o, o primă întâlnire în punctul zero. Sper să continue colaborarea noastră. Vă mulțumesc foarte mult. Pentru că sunt foarte multe de povestit, am atins foarte puțin din subiectele pe care mi le-am propus. Aveți foarte multe de împărtășit cu noi și mi-aș dori să continuăm când veți mai veni aici. So we'll continue the conversation. It's been a joy speaking with you and um, I know that you appreciate more than just the words that I say, but you appreciate the wisdom and the presence that, that comes from it. So I want to thank you as well for the beautiful uh, interview and keep up your good work. May you continue to inspire our viewers. Mulțumesc mult. <laughs> mulțumesc. Și dumneavoastră vă mulțumesc și până data viitoare, ca de obicei, vă doresc gânduri senine.